Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to chapter eight. Uh, we are still in the expressions and equations unit. Chapter eight is called functions and inequalities. So uh, the last chapter in this unit, um, lesson one, the title of lesson one is called function tables. Uh, so we'll start quite a bit of vocabulary today. Uh, but a function, in math, a function is a rule, is a rule to create an output from from an input. So again, function is you have an input, you put it into the function, and then you get an output. Uh, that'll make more sense in just a minute when we look at function tables. So uh, just in general, though, a function is a rule that creates an output from an input. So that's our first vocabulary word for today. Think of it as a rule. Function is a rule. Uh, drop down some space, because we're going to be putting some vocabulary words right in here. Uh, and we're going to make a table that looks like this. We're going to have an input here. Input, then... Uh, Make some space, and on this side we'll have an output. Okay, something like that. So this is making a function table. Okay, the input is also known as uh, a few different a few different terms describe the input. It is also the x value. The output is also known as the y value. Uh, this thing, this overall thing, is a function table. So let's write that over here. Again, lots of vocabulary today. This thing is a function table. And uh, the input is also known as the independent variable. So above this, I'm going to write independent, independent variable. The output, or the y value, is also known as the dependent variable. This thing in the middle right here is where we're going to put the rule. So this is the function rule right in the middle. Okay, again, tons of vocabulary today. Let's get these babies highlighted. So this whole thing that we're looking at is a function table. The input also known as the x value, also known as the independent variable. This thing in the middle here is a function rule, and we'll get more into that in just a second. This, the output, is also known as the y value, and it's also known as the dependent variable. So, basically, Input, you're going to apply a rule to the input, and then something comes out the other side, and that's your output. Uh, when uh, We're going to look at two different, uh, solving two different types of function tables. When you have the input and you have the function rule, kids like those better because it's just straightforward. You have some value, 
You put it into the role and you get an output. Also, you may have a function table where you know the output, but you don't and you don't know the input. So you might have the output, you might know the rule, and you be you will be trying to find the input. So that we'll look at that in just a little bit. That's called working backwards. If you know the output, not the input, you're going to try and figure out, okay, this is my output. What did I start with? Uh, okay, so let's put a function rule in here. The function rule is x plus 7. So that means whatever our x value is, we're going to add 7 to it, and then that's going to give us our output. So let's just list some x input values. If we have an x, an input of 10, all we're going to do is put in a 10 for the x, and we're going to add 7. We're using the function rule. So 10 plus 7, our output is 17. What if we had an input of 12? Again, we're just going to put in 12 into our function rule. 12 plus 7, output would be 19. If we had an input of 14, put it into our function rule, and our output would be 21. So again, straightforward. If you know the input, all you're doing is putting the input into the rule and seeing what you get as your output. Okay, so now let's look at uh, before we look at working backwards, actually, I'm going to give you your hidden treasure. Uh, it's not puzzles anymore. I'm going to give it to you with words. Uh, I've caught a few kids scrolling ahead looking for the puzzle and not watching the videos carefully enough. So your hidden treasure for this lesson is to tell me, describe and give an example of a ratio. R-A-T-I-O. It was from the very first chapter uh, this whole year, a ratio. So look back through your notes, look it up in your glossary. What is a ratio? And give a quick example. If you can answer that, you're going to win the hidden treasure. Okay, so now we're going to look at working backwards. And again, working backwards is when you know the output, you know the rule, but you do not know the input. So let's make another table. Input. This is, uh, our rule is going to be 3x. Here's our output. So again, this time we know the output, we know the rule, but we're going to be trying to find the input. Okay, so uh, let's look at some examples. Let's say our output is 6. Well, this right here, a number right next to a variable, means 3 times x. So you can work backwards. Uh, using a few different strategies. You could just trial and error, put in a 1. What if 1 was our input? We would do 3 times 1, our output would be 3. So you might be able to just figure out, try 2. If you put in a 2, 3 times 2 is 6. So that would give us our output. 2, and then here we would have 3 times 2, that would give us our output. The other thing you can do is over here on the side, if it's if you're multiplying x times 3, what's the opposite of multiplying by 3? What is the inverse operation from last chapter? You might be able to think about that. Um, undo the rule. To undo it, to undo the rule, we would divide by 3. 6 divided by 3, it's another strategy. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Um, what if our output was 15? 3 times what number 
gives us 15. That's another strategy. Just look at the rule and figure out, well, what's going to work to get me to that? And, or, undo the rule with divide by 3. What's 15 divided by 3? Output, I think, is 5, but let's test it. 3 times 5 does work. That's 15. <clears throat> what if our output was 21? 21 divided by 3 is 7. And again, let's just plug it into our rule to be sure 3 times 7 is 21. So that is working backwards. When you know the output, you know the rule, and you're trying to find the input. Uh, let's look at a little more complicated uh, rule. Tip this down. You can see this. Uh, we'll have an input, uh, a rule, 2x plus 4, and our output here. Again, these are the x values, these are the y values. Uh, also known as the independent variable, input or x value, dependent variables, the output or y value. So now we have a little more complicated rule. 2x time or 2x plus 4. 2 times some number plus 4. When our input, when we put in our input, we use this rule, we're going to get an output. So these are a little trickier. What if I had an output of 18? Again, I could put in numbers. I could trial and error, or guess and check is another strategy. Uh, put in a 2 into this rule. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4 is 8. So that's too little. So I know that my input is going to be greater than 2. I might try 5, make it bigger. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 4 is 14. I still don't get the right output, but I'm getting closer. Let's try 6. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 4 is 16. I'm getting closer still. Let's increase the input by 1. 7. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 4 is 18. So we just found it. 7 would be our input. For this rule, and getting an output of 18. Uh, so our rule here would be 2 times 7 plus 4. Now, if you were trying to undo this rule, you would go in reverse order of order of operations. Here we're going to multiply first, and then we're going to add 4. If we are going to undo the rule, we're doing that backwards. So the first thing we are going to do is subtract 4. That's the inverse of add 4. What is the inverse of multiply by 2? The inverse of multiply by 2 is divide or inverse of multiply by 2 is divide by 2. So that's another strategy uh, is to take the rule and do it backwards with the inverse operations. So 18, take away 4, is 14. Divide 14 divided by 2, we get 7. So lots of strategies you can use for solving function tables. Guess and check. You can try to undo the rule. Uh, but the key is you've got to plug in the input, apply the rule, and you have to get the output. If you don't, you've got to try something else. Uh, let's look at an output of 22. This time I'll undo the rule. What's 22 minus 4? I'd get 18. What is 18 divided by 2? I would get 9. But let's check this just to be sure. I think my answer is 9, but let's plug it into the rule. 2 times 9 is 18 plus 4 and it does work. We get 22. What if we had an output of 34? What's our input? 
Well, again, if I undo the rule on all these, it's going to look like this. What's 34? Subtract 4. That gives me 30. 30 divided by 2 is 15. Again, always check it, plug it into the rule to make sure it works. 2 times 15 is 30, plus 4, we get 34. It does work. So, on some of your practice today, you will, you will know the input. Okay, if you know the input, you're just plugging it into the rule and seeing what your output is. If you know the output to start, like on these two that we walked through, you're going to have to try either the guess and, trek, guess and check strategy, or you can try and undo the rule, but make sure you're testing it when you think you have an input. Make sure you're testing it into the rule and that you're getting that same output. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about, I'm almost out of room here, is graphing the function. Okay, if you were going to graph this function, you would use your x values and the y values as your ordered pairs. And you would just graph it, x comma y. If I was to graph this function, 7 comma 18 would be on this graph for this function. 9 comma 22 would be on this graph. And just a quick reminder, that this is your guide when you're graphing, okay? Very important. The x value always tells you, only tells you, right if it's positive, left if it's negative. The y value always goes either up or down. Up if it's positive, down if it's negative. You must follow that guide. A lot of kids back in chapter 6 uh, made mistakes with uh, coordinates. Got to go back to this always. Okay, that does it for uh, chapter eight, lesson one. I will see you soon for lesson two.